What is up guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video is about GNOME 45 and what's new, and there's a lot of cool updates. And we're probably gonna start with the biggest one yet, and that would be improvements to GDK 4.12 and Mutter, mostly Mutter. So we're gonna talk about Mutter. Uh, GNOME's window manager Mutter has a dedicated kernel mode setting thread. This thread reduces latency for on-screen movements such as mouse pointer and windows movements. It decouples the handling of movements from the main thread, which should result in much less stutter. And it does. It's stutterless. It's just amazing. Even in gaming, it's been incredible. I've had a flawless experience in the last couple of days, especially with Guild Wars 2. It also fixed the Guild Wars 2 bug, which is pretty cool. Now, uh, for this to be usable for me, I need to do this. Sorry about that. And um, I'm going to start off here. We're going to close this. We're on Arch Linux, by the way. You can see all the stuff there. But the cool part is, sorry about this little bug. No one's changed, but if we go in here. You can see system details. Check that out. So it even shows the firmware version of the motherboard. The motherboard's make and model. How many much RAM you have, your CPU, your GPU, all of this. Now, originally, I recorded this on my 5700 XT, but there was some weird issues with H.265. Uh, their encoders are not the best, even on the newest GPUs. So I'm recording this again on my 3070. But you can literally just copy all of this and paste it wherever you go. So if someone asks, hey, um, what are your specs? You just go in here, hit copy, paste it into the Discord, and you're good to go. And you have everything you need. They have everything they need to help you. Next, date and time has a new thing here, which allows you to change a lot of cool stuff. So if I want seconds and week numbers, I can do that. That doesn't do anything. It unifies stuff. It makes things a lot easier to use. Uh, if we head over into keyboard, you're going to notice that there's a new compose. So they did change a lot in here. They also added stuff to network and Wi-Fi. Uh, changed some stuff about Bluetooth that I can't actually show you because I don't know how to get there. And they also changed a lot of stuff in the Thunderbolt setting, which I can't get to. Look how smooth that is. It's like playing a piano. It's beautiful. We're going to move over to Nautilus. As you can see, the theme screwing up. That's because, well, GNOME uh, 45 updated its theming and also updated the way that Nautilus looks. So now uh, themes have to catch up with what they did. It's annoying. But the first thing you might notice is that this is over here. And I think that's supposed to be over there. Let me just check. Because I want to check. Where are we? It's not going to let me check. But uh, the cool point about this is, I guess, the search. So I want you to watch how fast this works. Cider. Look at that. Huh? Sit? No? No? What about uh, Church OBS? No, I said OBS. And it's not going to find anything unless you click search everywhere and then it finds OBS. Uh, it's pretty much instantaneous across the board. It's beautiful. It's like they, it's like gnomes indexed your entire, uh, your entire OS instantaneously. It's beautiful. I don't know how they do it, but it's pretty freaking amazing. Uh, there are a couple changes to this, but it only happens when there's background apps. So I can't really show you that. That's annoying. What else is in here? Oh my, there's, there's so much cool stuff. I'm actually screwing with you. We went over all of it. No, we didn't. All right, so I'm gonna go over here. This is the new, where is it? There's a new image manager, image viewer. Is this it? This is it. So this thing is rewritten in Rust and uh, it's not really the fastest, but it does work very, very well. And for people like me who can unlock their scroll, it's been optimized for that. You may notice these little artifacts. Uh, you don't notice them from far away though, unless you're looking up here. I gotta fix that one day. But it has high resolution scrolling support, which is very cool. And uh, check that out, like good button placement for once. Doesn't give a lot of details about your image, unfortunately, but it is what it is. And it will only let you select the files that are supported now. So that's that. Calculator has a few changes. I know most people aren't interested in calculators, but 
Uh, if we go to advanced, you'll see that we can now degrees, degrees, angle. Where was it? Currency. It now has the Jamaican currency. Yeah, seriously, that's actually a thing. Uh, it's a little smoother too. Not bad, but a calculator is a calculator. You know what I mean? A big update is the fact that the default web browser is actually usable now. So if you notice, it actually looks like a real web browser. It's nice and clean. It's got Firefox sync support and um, they did overhaul a lot of it. So there's improved storage access, save passwords, permission prompts, support for clipboard access permission requests, as well as the new window action in the web app mode. So it's been really, really cool. Uh, I did use it for about an hour today after I realized all the changes and it does function pretty well. So we go to YouTube. I don't know why I'm going to YouTube. Every YouTuber goes to YouTube and they're just like, ah, oh, I'm going to show off my YouTube channel. It doesn't load as fast as other browsers, but it loads nonetheless. Why do you exist? Please stop existing, Mr. Beast. Ugh. Hate his videos. Anyway, moving on. We already covered the calculator. We've pretty much covered everything. It may not seem like much, but when you really do feel it, you feel it. Like, the changes are amazing. There's no stutter. And as I told you, it did fix a Guild Wars 2 bug. And I'm going to show you that bug real quick because it's very important. So when we open up Guild Wars 2, what happens is sometimes we get a broken launcher. You'll notice there's like a weird invisible type thing around the outside of the launcher. I don't know if it's going to show up or not. Are we running the game? We are. Who are you? You over here. I have three monitors, so you're not over there. I can't show you. I guess it's gone completely invisible. That's funny. Uh, stop. Confirm. Play. Where are you? I guess it just doesn't want to show up in a nutshell. Of course, right when I'm recording, it's just like, I don't want to open. You can't make me open. I can make you do whatever I want you to do. You are my app you will do as you're told you will open whether you like it or not there we go so as you can see the launch is normal now instead of the weird outline but the performance around it is still janky because this is a CEF launcher and those are not known to perform very well at all so I need to get out of this it's killing my performance go away so with that, I like you guys. I like to thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, share, have a conversation, you know, in the comments below. Join my Discord. You know, um, a lot of cool changes to this. I do like the improvements in making it a stutterless experience. Uh, I can't wait for the VRR patch to be updated for GNOME 45 to show you what extensions last are not working. Uh, here they are, the ones in red and yellow. Uh, Blur My Shell is currently working towards GNOME 45 support. They have one comment towards it so far, but it doesn't work. This is the compiled version. Uh, Dash to Dock updated a while ago. Desktop Clock, no. Free on, no. Game Mode, no. Media Controls, no. And Rounded Windows Corners, no. And this is the one that really disappoints me, the, the QST tweaks. I really hope they do update soon, because... Uh, yeah, this is just ugly. Heh. Yeah. Alright. Bye bye, everyone.